All right, everyone, welcome. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over one of the old exam threes for Calculus 3. So this one's going to be from the spring of 2018. I'm going to go over the solutions to all these problems and uh, hopefully I'll help you guys review for the, uh, the upcoming exam here in 2021. All right, let's get started here. So the first one, we're going to start off nice and simple. Evaluate the double integral of x sine of xy where r is the rectangle with x values from 1 to 2 and y values from 0 to pi. All right, so this is going to be an iterated rectangular integral. So I'm going to set this up. We have x sine of xy, and I guess I'm going to do a dy first for the reason I'll explain in a moment. And this will go from y is 0 to pi, and this will go from x is 1 to 2. So when we do the y integral of this, this is why I chose to do y first, because I divide by my coefficient x, and that's going to give me negative cosine of xy. Now, it wouldn't have been wrong to do it the other way, but it would have been a bit more difficult. All right, so then if I plug in pi for y, then I end up getting negative cosine of pi x, um, and then we have minus cosine of 0, so that's going to be plus 1. Then I do this right here. I integrate negative cosine of negative sine of pi x over pi plus x. And this is from 1 to 2. Well, sine of 2 pi is 0. Sine of pi is 0, so we don't get anything from this. And I plug 2 in here, and then I subtract when I plug 1 in here. And this ends up just being an elaborate way of saying one. So one's going to be our answer for number one, fittingly, I guess. All right, if f of xy is continuous, then the integral from 1 to 2 and 0 to log of x of the function dy dx is, now you notice that all these answer choices are in the opposite order. We do x first and then y. So for this, I'm going to draw a picture of my region, and that will help me flip, or flip the direction of integration here. All right. So let's see, y goes from the function y equals 0, which I'll draw right here, to the function y equals ln of x. Okay, so we have something like that going on. And then x goes from 1, and since ln of 1 is 0, it's going to be right here, uh, to 2. Let's say x is 2 is right here. So it looks like we'll be integrating over this shaded region right here. All right, so then if we flip the order of integration here and we do it with respect to x first and then y, our upper function with x, so the thing further from the x-axis here, or sorry, the y-axis, is going to be x equals 2. So that will be my upper bound. And then this curve is my lower bound. But since y was ln of x, I'm going to have e to the y is x. So I'm going to write this as e to the y down here. And then finally, what are the range of y values that I have? I have y equals 0 down here. And then which y value is this? Well, if we plugged into the natural log we had earlier, we have ln of 2. So this integral can be rewritten as the integral from 0 to ln of 2, e to the y to 2 of this function right here. And hopefully that's one of these choices. That's oh, the very first one. So it looks like a is going to be our answer. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. That's not, that's not ln of 2. That's just 2. Um, which one is it? Here it is. 0 to ln of 2, e to the y of 2. All right, good. Okay, identify the surface rho is 2 cosecant of phi. Now, I'm not too familiar with how rho and spherical coordinates work with the three less common trig functions. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do to make things easier is I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of phi, canceling out this cosecant. And we end up getting rho sine of phi is 2. Now remember, rho times sine of phi is equal to r. So we know that r is going to be 2 here. This is the curve that we're describing. So this is going to be a circle of, or sorry, a cylinder of radius 2. Um, so which one of these matches that? Well, it has to be this one. Because we have r is 2. It's the same thing as saying r squared is 4, or x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. 
So that's another way. That's that's a way of doing this. All right. Let's move on to our next problem here. Evaluate this double integral. All right. So this is another iterated rectangular integral, and this time it really doesn't matter which order we do it in. Um, it's equally easy either way. So I'm going to do dx dy. So you have zero to one for that, and zero to log two of this. All right, so we do the x integral here, but the x integral of this is just going to be, well, itself. And this goes from 0 to 1. So when we plug in those numbers here, um, we end up getting, uh, we have e to the 1 plus y minus e to the 0 plus y, or e to the y. All right, then we do this integral, which once again, both of these are just going to be the same. This goes from zero to ln of two here. So we have e to the ln of two plus one minus e to the ln of two minus e to the first power plus e to the zero right here. So if we simplify this, e to the ln of two is two. So this will be two times e. This was just going to be negative 2. This is minus e, and this is plus 1. So if we simplify this, we end up getting e minus 1 here. Now, as I'm writing this down, I realized that there was a quicker way of doing this. You can actually split up this function over multiplication. So this is e to the x times e to the y. So we could have done this as the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x dx, times the integral from 0 to ln of 2, e to the y dy. And this would have resulted in e minus 1 times uh, 2 minus 1, which would have been e minus 1. So this would have been a quicker way of doing it. Uh, I, I, forgot, I forgot that this could split over multiplication as I was doing this uh, the first time around here. Oh, it looks, it looks like I wasn't able to get all of my work over here. So this ended up being 2e minus 2 minus e plus 1 over here on this side. If you did it the long way. All right, let me shift it over so we can include that stuff. There we go. All right, on to the next one. Let r be the region bounded above by the circle x minus 1 squared plus y squared is 1 and below by the x-axis. All right, let's draw this. This is a circle of radius 1 centered at 1, 0. So that's going to look like this. But then we're bounded below by the x-axis. So we're really thinking about this region here. Then the double integral over this region of x, y squared dA is, and then all of our answers are in polar coordinates here. So let's see how we change this double integral to be in terms of polar coordinates. So first of all, let's change the integrand here. So we have x, x is r cosine of theta, and we have y squared, which will be r squared sine squared of theta, and then dA for polar coordinates will give us an additional r. All right, so right away we can simplify this here, and this ends up being r to the fourth cosine of theta sine squared of theta. If we were running out of time on this exam or something like that, that would immediately allow us to make an educated guess as to which it would be. It has to be either A or B right here. So let's see if we can decide between these two next. So our function here in terms of R, the way to represent a circle of diameter 2 in the x direction with R is 2 cosine of theta. And then since we go all the way back to the origin here, our lower bound will be 0. Now, if we were to trace this curve out with thetas, we would go all the way from 0 to pi over 2 to get this part of the circle. So this will go from 0 to pi over 2. So that leaves only one answer choice remaining here. It's going to be this one right here. But if you're running out of time, you could have made a 50-50 chance by eliminating a lot of the ones with a bad integrand. All right, find the volume of the ellipsoid x squared plus y, or x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 plus z squared equals 1, knowing that the volume of the sphere of radius 1 is 4 pi over 3, and using this transformation. I'm pretty confident we actually did this exact problem in class, but let's, let's go ahead and do it anyways. 
So what we want to do is we want to find the integral of 1 dv over this region right here. So I'll just draw an ellipsoid uh, to represent that. All right. Uh, well, what we could do here is we could transform dv into dx dy dz or something like that. Um, but we really, it's kind of hard to integrate this or integrate over this region with uh, Cartesian coordinates. So let's use the substitution. So if we compute the Jacobian for this substitution, well, let's see here. We have the x derivative of u, or the u derivative of x, which is 2, and then the v and w derivatives here will be 0. Next, we have the u derivative of y, which is 0. The v derivative is 3, and then the w derivative is 0. And then finally, we have a 0u derivative, a 0v derivative, and 1 for a w derivative for z. And then we take the determinant of this matrix, but the determinant of a diagonal matrix is simply the product of all of the numbers down the diagonal. So we end up with 6. So this integral right here ends up being the triple integral of 6 du dv dw over uvw space here, the version of this in uvw space. Well, what does this look like in that space? Well, we substitute in the transformations here. So we have 4u squared over 4 plus 9v squared over 9 plus w squared is 1. Now, if we cross those out and look at what we have left, this ends up being a sphere. So this ends up being 6 times the volume integral for a sphere. And we know what the volume of the unit sphere is. It's going to be 4 pi over 3. So this will end up being 6 times 4 pi over 3, aka 24 pi over 3, which can be further simplified to 8 pi. So there we go. We end up getting 8 pi as the volume for this ellipsoid here. All right, next, let's move on to this one. Let E be the solid bounded between Z is root x squared plus y squared and Z is root 3x squared plus 3y squared within this sphere. Then the triple integral of Z dV will end up being one of these here. All right, well, let's use the strategy that we used on one of the older problems by just changing the integrand over. And we may be able to eliminate some of these choices right away. So z in the spherical coordinates is rho cosine of phi. Then the Jacobian, which is included in the dv here, is rho squared sine of phi. So when we combine all these in a nicer way, we have rho cubed sine squared of phi cosine of phi. All right, and it seems like once again we've, um, or wait a minute, we, we don't have a sine squared. What am I doing? There we go. Um, so it seems like we've narrowed it down to these two choices down here. So we have to decide between these two. Okay, now both of these have us going from 0 to 2, and that's because we're going from the origin. We include the origin because it's uh, within both of these. Uh, we're going from the origin all the way out to the sphere because we need to be within the sphere. So we go from 0 to 2 because this is a sphere of radius 2. Now phi, what are we going to do with phi here? Um, well, we're bounded between these two cones, right? And the way of expressing cones in spherical coordinates is to just have phi equals an angle. So we've already seen this one before. This one represents phi is pi over 4. Now this one might be a bit less familiar. This has the um, cylindrical equation z is root 3 r right here. Now if we write this in spherical coordinates, we have rho cosine of phi is root 3 rho sine of phi. So if we simplify this, we have 1 over root 3 is tangent of phi. Oops, sorry about that. Now, which angle right here is going to make tangent be 1 over root 3? That's pi over 6. 
So our phi will start at pi over 6, giving us the higher cone right here, and then it'll rotate further down, giving us the shallower cone here. So we have pi over 6 to pi over 4 here. And these are all symmetric with respect to spinning around the z-axis, so all of these answer choices have it be from 0 to 2 pi for theta. Anyways, that one's going to be our answer for this. Okay, the next one. Convert the point 1, negative 1, negative root 2 from rectangular to spherical coordinates, rho, theta, and phi. All right, well, rho is relatively easy to figure out because rho squared is x squared, so 1, plus y squared, which is 1, plus z squared, which is 2. So rho squared is 4, implying that rho has got to be 2. All right, so that narrows it down to one of these three options here. All right, next, let's focus on theta here. So if we look at the xy plane, and we have an x value of 1 and a y value of negative 1, we're going to be right here. And this is going to be all the way in the fourth quadrant here. So we could also do arctan of this and then add pi to get this. Um, but we can see that the angle, the only angle in here that's in the fourth quadrant that we have left is this one. So 7 pi over 4. And then finally, we could do something similar to the previous problem here. We figure out r and we figure out z. And that would help us get phi is 3 pi uh, over 4. Although that was shared between these, and phi can't be bigger than pi. So we could have eliminated this one actually a bit earlier here. All right, so there we go. We're able to figure out this was 2, 7 pi, and 4, 3 pi, over 4. Find the volume of the solid bounded by the paraboloids. Z is 6 minus x squared minus y squared, and z is 2x squared plus 2y squared. So if I were to make a rough drawing of these, this one is my upper parabola because we start at 6 and then go down. So we end up with something like that. And then this is my lower parabola which starts at the origin and then meets this one up a little ways. So we end up having something like this, which kind of looks like a crushed in sphere. The angles right here are kind of pointy. It's not smooth like a sphere would be. All right, so let's find the volume here. Well, the volume enclosed between two surfaces is simply this surface minus the other one. So I have 6 minus x squared minus y squared minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. So that in total gives me this right here. Now let's see where these guys intersect. That will uh, dictate where, uh, what the bounds will be from this. So if I set these equal to each other, I have 6 minus x squared minus y squared is 2x squared plus 2y squared. So if I add x squared and y squared over, I have 6 is 3x squared plus 3y squared, aka 2 is x squared plus y squared. So this is a circle of radius root 2. So this is what it looks like if we were to project onto the xy plane. So this is root 2 here. Now since we're integrating over a circle, that definitely encourages us to use polar coordinates. So I'm going to change this into a polar coordinate integral. This is going to be 6 minus 3r squared, and then we have r dr d theta. We're going all the way around the circle, so theta goes from 0 to 2 pi here. And then we have a circle of radius root 2, so that goes from 0 to square root of 2 right here. All right, now we just need to do this integral right here. Well, let's see. The integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta, well, there aren't any thetas in here, so this is just going to give us a multiple of 2 pi. And this is 6r minus 3r cubed. All right, we integrate this with our remaining room here. And we have 3r squared minus 3 fourths r to the fourth from 0 to root 2. Now, if I plug root 2 in here, I have 3 times 2 is 6 minus 3. 
So I end up with 3 for all of this, and then times 2 pi will end up being 6 pi. So my solution to that, once I do my arithmetic here, is, is 6 pi. Okay, the next one. Rewriting these triple integrals is, is pretty tricky, so I'm glad we have this one for practice here. Rewrite the triple integral 0 to 16, root x to 4, and 0 to 4 minus y as an equivalent iterated integral in this order, dy, dx, dz. All right, so let's try to do that. Now let's see here. We're first trying to sandwich this region between two surfaces with y. So it seems like the surface that's furthest in the y direction is this one right here. And this is going to be the plane y plus z equals 4. But we want everything in terms of, we want y equal to something. So if we solve for z, or sorry, if we solve for y, this will give us y is 4 minus z right here. So that will be my upper bound because that's the furthest thing in the y direction. And then my lower bound, the thing uh, furthest to the um, back in the y direction, is this surface here. So this surface is going to be y equals the square root of x. So that will be my lower bound here. And just like in a lot of the other multiple choice problems, we've actually already narrowed this down uh, to be between just these two, simply from knowing um, what's happening right here. Now, all right, now let's see here. Um, well, both of these have this right here, so I think that's pretty clearly going to be the answer, but let's see why that's the answer um, for the x bounds. So what we're doing is we're crushing everything down here onto the xz plane. So if we do that, we have this parabola-looking thing kind of coming down like this in the xz plane. That's what the image is if we were to crush this back because of this bend right here. All right, so let's see here. I know that root x is y, and I know that y plus z is 4. So we get that root x plus z is 4. Root x is 4 minus z. Ah, then we can see where this comes from. It's x is 4 minus z squared. So that's the name of this curve right here, which goes the furthest in the x direction. And then the least amount of x we have is back here at this wall at x equals 0. All right, finally, we need to do dz. And that's just between two points. So we have 0 here, and then this is the point 4 right there. So there we go. We were able to successfully change this integral to be in this order here. All right, the next problem. Which of the following represents the area of the region that lies inside r is root 3 sine of theta and outside r is cosine of theta? All right, let's draw this picture. So r is root 3 sine of theta is a circle of diameter root 3 in the y direction. And then r equals cosine of theta is a circle of diameter 1 in the x direction. All right, so we're trying to find the area that lies inside this circle, but it needs to be outside of this. So we're really looking for all of this area right here. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, the way I always like to imagine polar areas is I like to kind of shoot laser beams from the origin out to where I want my area to be. So it seems like my area first starts at whatever this angle is, which seems to be where these two curves meet. We have root 3 sine of theta is cosine of theta. Um, let's see, that's tangent of theta is 1 over root 3. Oh, we've already talked about this earlier today. Theta is going to be pi over 6. So there's got to be something to do with pi over 6 in our answer here. So we start at pi over 6. Now as we shoot our little laser out, we do get all the way to root 3 sine of theta, but we're accidentally going over the place that we don't want to have. So we're going to do the area of root 3 sine of theta minus the area from cosine of theta. And we're going to do that. We're going to have interference with the smaller circle until at least pi over 2. Then once we get to pi over 2, we only have root 3 sine of theta. We don't need to subtract this off anymore because we're not intersecting with that anymore. 
So to summarize, from pi over 6 to pi over 2, we need to subtract off cosine of theta. And then from pi over 2 all the way to pi right here, we just have root 3 sine of theta on its own. Now the only one of these that seems to match up with that is going to be this one right here. Uh, probably a close second would have been this one, but this one subtracts off cosine of theta all the way to pi. But we don't need to do that once we get to pi over 2. Whereas this one right here is subtracting off the area of cosine only up until pi over 2. So it looks like it's got to be option E right here. All right, which of the following integrals represents the integral from 0 to 1, negative root 1 minus y squared to 0, and root x squared plus y squared to root 2 minus x squared minus y squared, and we have z dz dx dy in cylindrical coordinates. All right, so cylindrical coordinates is going to keep uh, z the same, so we're going to start with dz like all of our answer choices do, uh, but x and y will change into r and theta. So when we do that, we're going to end up with an r dr d theta. So our integrand will now be z times r. So that means that our answer, once again, has to be between one of these two right here. All right. Now if we substitute x and y for r, uh, we have root 2 minus r squared and root r squared, or just r. So that means immediately that it has to be uh, this one right here. Um, even if we didn't have this eliminated, let's take a look at um, how we would know what the x and y coordinates do. So if we were to draw this on the xy plane, our bottom function with x would be this unit circle, and our upper function with x would be this right here. And then finally, y goes from 0 to 1. So it looks like we would be dealing with this part of the circle, which goes from 0 to 1 in r, because it's the unit circle, so that's why we have this. And then it goes from the angle pi over 2 to pi. That's why we have this as our theta bound. All right, so the next three questions have to do with this transformation here. x is 2u cosine of v, and y is u times sine of v. Now, even though these use u and v's, this may look a bit more familiar using different variables. So for this one, I'm going to call it 2r cosine of theta, and I'm going to call this r sine of theta. So this is, this is like almost polar coordinates, except we have an extra 2 right here. So that's pretty much what's going on here, and that's how we're going to think about these. Now first we need to compute the Jacobian. So the Jacobian is partial x, partial u, partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, and partial y, partial v. All right, partial x partial u will be 2 cosine of v, and then we do the v derivative here, and we get this. Uh, then we do the u derivative of y, and then we do the v derivative of y. All right, and then when we do the determinant here, we have 2u cosine squared of v plus 2u sine squared of v aka we get uh, 2u here. So that's going to be our Jacobian for this. And it kind of makes sense, right? If we think about these as polar coordinates, we're doing polar coordinates, but we have an extra 2. So we're going to have the same Jacobian with polar coordinates, but we're just going to put an extra 2. Alrighty. Let's move on to the next one here. Where is it? Here it is. All right, if, the, if r is the region within this ellipse, x squared over 4 plus y squared is 1, and above the x-axis, so that's this picture here, find the corresponding region s in the uv plane. All right, now if we think of these as like polar coordinates, with, at least with theta or v, uh, we start here, and then we rotate around all the way this way. So our theta is going to go from 0 to pi. And as that's happening... We have x can go as far as 2 right here, and y can go as far as 1. So if x is 2u cosine of v and y is u sine of v, that means that u can be as big as 1. 
So that leads us to believe that this right here is going to be our representation for u and v right here. It's tempting to pick one of these right here, um, but really we're just going to pick this. This is, this is what's known as a, uh, a polar rectangle, because r goes from 0 to 1, and then theta goes from 0 to pi. And then finally, we're going to use the transformation to set up this integral. All right, so let's see here. Uh, we have the square root of x squared over 4 plus y squared. Well, let's see, in terms of u and v, this is the square root of uh, 4u squared cosine squared of v over 4 plus u squared sine squared of v. And then we have our Jacobian of 2u. So when we simplify all of this, the 4s cancel. We have a Pythagorean pair here. So we end up with 2u squared du dv. So we know it has to be one of these. Now u is going from 0 to 1, and v is going from 0 to pi. So it's definitely got to be uh, this answer right here. All right, and then the final part of this exam was a free response part, which we won't have, but it's still worth going over these problems because they're good practice. All right, let D be the triangle in the xy plane with vertices negative 1, 2, uh, 1, 0, and 1, 4. Write the integral xy as one iterated integral. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the integral with respect to y first. Oh, I guess we have, we already have this over here. So I'm going to do y first. So I'll do dy dx. Now let's see here. Our upper bound for y is going to be whatever this line is, and our lower bound for y is going to be whatever this line is here. So if I'm not mistaken, if this is the point negative 1, 2, and this is the point 1, 4, then this line has a slope of positive 1, and it seems like it has a, a y-intercept of 3. So it looks like our upper bound here will be x plus 3. Meanwhile, this one has a slope of negative 1, since we go down to 1, 0. So this has a slope of negative 1, and the y-intercept here is halfway between 2 and 0, which is 1. So this is going to be negative x plus 1 right there. And then finally, we just write the x values that we go between. That means we're going to go between negative 1, our lowest x value, and 1, which is our highest x value. Next, we need to evaluate the integral 0 to root 2, x to root 4 minus x squared of 1 over root 1 plus x squared plus y squared dy dx. Now, this makes me a little bit suspicious. I see something that looks like a circle here. And I also see an x squared plus y squared. So this gives me the idea that maybe we should convert this into polar coordinates. Well, let's see what the domain we're integrating over is. So the square root of 4 minus x squared and y, that's going to be the upper half circle, which I guess we can use this one right here. So we have this upper half circle of radius 2, or square root of 4. And then we have y equals x. So it's going to be this line right here. So this is our lower bound with y, and then this is our upper bound right here. So we're going to be somewhere in this region here. Now our x only goes from 0 to root 2. And presumably this is going to be root 2 right here. So it looks like we're just integrating over 1 8 of the circle right here. So we should definitely use polar coordinates. So if I transform this into polar coordinates, my r goes from 0 to 2, and my theta will go from pi over 4 to pi over 2, since I have this eighth of the circle. Now what's my integrand? Well, I have an r by default because of the Jacobian, and then I have the square root of 1 plus r squared, since this will turn into an r squared. This is dr d theta. All right, so now all I have to do is do this integral, which isn't too bad. So I do u is 1 plus r squared, and du over 2 is r dr. So this will turn into the integral 
um, if I transform my bounds, they'll be from 1 to 5. And then I have 1 half du over root u. And then d theta. All right, well, our, our theta integral, if I integrate this, this is just going to turn into a pi over 4, or the difference between these here. And this, if I integrate 1 over root u by the power rule, I'm going to have u to the 1 half from 1 to 5. So in summary, this is going to be pi over 4, and then we have root 5 minus root 1, or just 1 right there. So that's going to be the value of this integral. So again, we use the multiplication trick to save a bit of time since this didn't have anything to do with theta at all. All right, let's move on to the final part of this exam here. Consider the solid region E cut from this cylinder by the plane Z equals zero and the plane Z or X plus Z is three. So that's this picture depicted here. Set up a double integral of the volume of the solid E in Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so if we want to find a volume uh, using a double integral, that means that our integrand needs to be our upper surface minus our lower surface. Now, our lower surface is z equals zero, so I guess we don't really need anything like that. Um, but to get our upper surface, we subtract x here, and we end up with z is three minus x. So we have three minus x, and then technically we're doing minus zero, but we don't really need to put that there. Um, all right, now we need to get our x and y bounds. Now, it looks like in the xy plane, this shape is making a circle, and it looks like it's going to be a circle of radius 2. So if we do the integral with respect to y first, the upper half circle with y is root 4 minus x squared, and the lower half circle with y is negative root 4 minus x squared. And then finally, x itself in a circle of radius 2 will go between negative two and two. So this would be the double integral in terms of Cartesian coordinates. Um, looking at this, it may not be too bad to do this integral with Cartesian coordinates, but I think we could probably do better elsewhere. Uh, let's try to set this up using cylindrical coordinates now. And this time it's a triple integral. So when we do a triple integral to find volume, we're just integrating one dv. But dv in terms of cylindrical coordinates is r, dz dr d theta. So we can't forget to put our r right here. Now they were kind enough to tell us that all three of these are going to have a lower bound of zero right here. So let's see, for z we have our lower bound here of zero and then our upper bound we found earlier z is 3 minus x but in terms of cylindrical coordinates this is 3 minus r cosine of theta. So there's our upper bound there. Now r, since we have a circle of radius 2 down here, doing the polar coordinates for this is easy. Uh, we're going to go from 0 to 2 for our r, and 0 to 2 pi for our theta. Finally, we need to actually compute this integral one way or another and do the, the volume here. All right, so let's see. I'm going to do the first part of this integral. And I'm going to get rz if I integrate this with respect to z. And then I stick this in place of the z, and I get this right here. So if I multiply this out, I have 3r minus r squared cosine of theta. Now if I integrate this with respect to r, let's see. I'm going to get 3 halves r squared minus r cubed cosine of theta over 3 from 0 to 2. Well, this will be, uh, let's see here. I plug 2 into here. 2 squared over 2 is 2 times 3 is 6. I plug 2 into here. I have 8 thirds cosine of theta. And then putting 0 in for any of these will be 0. And then finally, I'm integrating this with respect to theta. So I have 6 theta minus 8 thirds sine of theta from 0 to 2 pi. Now if I plug either 0 or 2 pi in for sine, that will all be 0, um, but I could plug 2 pi into here and get 12 pi out of this. But plugging in 0 will give me nothing. So it turns out that our volume all combined is going to be 12 pi for this. All right, and that seems to be the end of this exam, so hopefully this was a helpful review to get you guys ready for your actual exam uh, coming up soon. So. 
Uh, yeah, best of luck on your real exam, and I hope everything goes well.